Ni Mo Juantin, ni Diego, Juan Naman Tikpiyaske, Tikpiyase to Compa to Tlamachtilis. Hello, everyone. Today uh, we're going to be having our second Nahuatl class. And um, today we're going to learn about Nahuatl, um, the Nahuatl alphabet, and where the stress lies in words. So I am now going to share my screen with you all. All right. Okay. All right. So today I'll be talking to you about the Nahuatl alphabet and the and Nahuatl stress. Essentially, this whole class is about how to pronounce words in Nahuatl. <clears throat> I'll be telling you where to stress each of the individual words in Nahuatl. Nahuatl has a very regular way of um, stressing words, which is one of the qualities that I like about the language. We're going to go through each individual letter and we're going to talk about how the letters are pronounced. And I will give you very specific rules about how some of the letters in Nahuatl are pronounced. At the last half of the class, we're going to do practice exercises where you actually get to um, pronounce words for me and I get to help you. Um, say them correctly or help you say them correctly. And in this class, we're finally gonna have our first homework assignment. The first homework assignment is available on the Google Drive. If you're watching this video on YouTube, I'm, uh, <clears throat> I'm providing the links uh, in the description of the video. And if you're watching this video, uh, if you're part of the live class, I'm gonna be sending you all the link to the Google Drive uh, at the end of the class in the question section. The homework is completely voluntary. You don't have to do it. You don't even have to turn it in. However, it's, you're going to get more out of the class if you do the homework because then you can see what you understand and what you don't understand. And in the question section of the live class, you can ask me those questions about the homework, um, whatever you're confused about. All right. <clears throat> so first, let's talk about where the loudest uh, syllable in Nahuatl lies. So if you notice and you look at Nahuatl words, you're going to notice that the words are really long. The good thing in Nahuatl is that always the second to last syllable of the word is the loudest syllable. And therefore, unlike Spanish, you don't need to write any accents in Nahuatl because it is consistently stressed on the second to last syllable. So here I have an example for you. Uh, one word that we learned last week, which was tlatohket, which means speaker. So here in, in the pronunciation guide, you can see that I've capitalized the loudest syllable in the word. If you break down the word tlatohket, it can be broken down into three syllables, tla, to, and ket. And the loudest syllable in this case is the to, because it is the second to last syllable. This ket is the last syllable and to is the second to last syllable. So it goes tlato ket. Not tlato ket and not tlato ket. So it's tlato ket, second to last syllable, loudest. Here I have a, another more uh, commonly requested word, which is I love you in Nahuatl. In Nahuatl, you say I love you, you say ni mitz tlaso tla. So here, tla is the last syllable, and the so, the so is um, the second to last syllable, so it's pronounced ni mitz tla, so tla. Quali? Another word you may, you may have heard in the past, the name of the capital city of the Aztecs, they called it Tenochtitlan. And so if you speak Spanish, you may have heard this being pronounced as Tenochtitlan right? Tenochtitlan, when you say it in the Spanish way, they generally pronounce the loudest syllable as this tlan, which is the last syllable. However, um, that is not the correct uh, stress of the word if you're going to say it the way that Nahuatl says it. And in Nahuatl, you would say it Tenochtitlan, as T is the second to last syllable, so titlan, not Tenochtitlan. <clears throat> One of the words that I like in Nahuatl is xochitlamanchiket. It means artist, and it literally means a person who makes flowery things. If you see this word xochit, it's right here. And tlamanchiket means person who makes things. So xochitlamanchiket means a person who makes flowery things. And that's how they express the idea of artist in Nahuatl. But no matter how long this word is, it's super long. It is still always pronounced on the, uh, the stress always lies on the second to last syllable. 
So here, the second to last syllable is this chi. Notice that it ends in UH, and notice that I'm saying chihket, not chuhket, but we'll talk about that later uh, at the, towards the end of the slides. Here I have my last example, which is the word kikishtia, which means he or she removes it. The reason I bring up this word kishtia, this verb means to remove something, kishtia. So you'll learn later in the course that there are some verbs that end in ia and other verbs that end in oe. Those verbs are always stressed on the second to last vowel. So here you see this verb ends in kish. It ends in tia, right? So the loudest syllable is this a, ti, this ia, right? The, the i part. So it goes tia. Okay, the reason I bring that up is a lot of people tend to mess that up. So it's tia, and then there are certain other verbs that end in oa. Those oa verbs, the o is the loudest syllable. <clears throat> All right, so now we're gonna go through the alphabet, and I'm gonna tell you how to pronounce each of the letters of the alphabet, okay? So the vowels in Nahuatl are a, e, i, and o. A, e, i, and o. Nahuatl does have the letter, the vowel u, but it's never alone. It's always part of some other letter. That's why it's not considered a vowel in Nahuatl. So essentially the, the vowels in Nahuatl are all pronounced just like you would expect as in Spanish. So a, e, i, o. These are the rest of the cons consonants in Nahuatl. The ones that are in yellow have some special rules, which I will talk to you in the following slides. But the rest of the consonants that are not in yellow, you pronounce them as you would expect them to be pronounced. So like, basically like you would pronounce them in Spanish. So the M is M, mm, mm, the N, the P is P, and the T is, a, it's not a T like in English, it's like a T in Spanish, which is a ta. Okay, so, but these that are in yellow, we're gonna talk about the special rules that apply to it. The letters F and R are, are not generally used in Nahuatl, especially they're definitely not used in classical Nahuatl, but the specific variety of Nahuatl that we're learning called Huasteca Nahuatl, this specific variety sometimes does have some words that have the letter F and the letter R, but they're much less in number. So you're not gonna see that many words with the letter F and R, and other varieties of Nahuatl don't necessarily use these letters. <clears throat> Just our variety does. All right, so now let's start with the letter C. The letter C before, the, before A or O is always pronounced like a K. So here I have an example for the way that the uh, Aztecs call themselves. They would call themselves the Mexica. So notice here, we have the letter C followed by the letter A, and it's pronounced like a K, so it's Mexica. Then we have the word for snake, which is coat, coat, and notice it's a C followed by an O. That's perfectly fine, that's not too difficult, that's easy to understand. But when it gets a little bit harder for some people who speak English is when they see it before an E or an I. And in those situations, uh, a C before an E or an I is always pronounced like an S. This basically kind of follows what like Spanish does. And so here I have the word for six in Nahuatl, chicuase. So notice here we have a C followed by an E. And so it's chicuase, chicuase. And here we have the word for women, siwat. It's a C followed by an I. So it's an S sound. So it's siwat, siwat, woman. The letter CH is always pronounced like chocolate, always. It's not never pronounced like a K, like sometimes in English we use a CH and it's pronounced like a K. In Nahuatl, it is consistently always pronounced CH. So here we have the word chili, which means pepper. In Nahuatl, that's where the word chile in Spanish comes from, chili. And so you see it's pronounced CH, it's not pronounced chili. Okay, it's chili. All right. Okay, so now, what, one thing that you should know historically about Nahuatl is that before the arrival of the Spanish, they did have their own writing system, but it was more logographic. It was more based on pictures that represented some sounds, but it was never a fully developed language. But what happened was when the Spanish arrived, they tried to write the language phonetically. 
and when they try to write it phonetically, they encountered certain sounds that did that do not exist in Spanish that they try to write with the um, alphabet that they had. And one of these um, combinations of letters that you're going to see in Nahuatl are the CU and the UC. See, Nahuatl has this very specific sound, which is the KW sound. And in Nahuatl, the KW sound is one single sound. So that one single sound is qua. So it's qua, right? And that's pretty, it's not too difficult. But what happened is that Spanish doesn't have that one single sound. So they wrote it in this way. So here I have an example of this word, tlacuali. Tlacuali means um, food. So it's tlacuali. So KW sound, pretty simple not too difficult to understand. We also have moquepa, it means he or she returns. Where it gets a little bit harder for people who are reading Nahuatl is when they encounter this UC. This UC, when you see it, uh, when you see me write it, it also represents the KW sound, okay? So um, I'm gonna give you an example. Here I have the word uh, nekpli, which is the word for honey in Nahuatl. And so I'm pronouncing it now as, as a central Nahuatl speaker or an older speaker would pronounce this word. They would pronounce it like this. Nekupli. Nekupli. So the KW sound is its own sound. The K sound. Um, however, in our variety of Nahuatl, we don't say it nekupli. Generally, the speakers of Huasteca Nahuatl just pronounce that UC as just the K. So they would say it like this. Nektli. Nectli, not nectli. However, either of those pronunciations is technically okay, so you could use either, but you'll hear me see, say nectli. The reason I bring up this UC is because a lot of people who read um, like the codices or read um, classical Nahuatl uh, text, they run into this word tecutli, which is not pronounced tecutli, but I'm just saying it that way so that you understand my reference because a lot of people will tell me, oh, tecutli, which means Lord, like a specific Lord, right? However, that's actually not how it's pronounced. You may see that word tecutli written tecutli that way because the Spanish couldn't represent that KW sound. However, it's really supposed to be tecutli, tecutli with that KW sound as one sound. So it's not tecutli and it's not teutli, as you might see it written, that's how it's written, but it's really supposed to be tecutli, and it means Lord. <clears throat> okay, the letter H is basically an aspiration in Nahuatl. What does an aspiration mean? An aspiration means that you expel extra air out of your mouth after you say the vowel. And generally, this is pretty subtle in Nahuatl, and you may or may not hear it, but here I'm going to say it for you and try to make it a little bit more obvious. So here we have the word pahtli. Pahtli. Pahtli means medicine. So you notice that I'm not saying patli, I'm saying pahtli, with an extra amount of air coming out of my throat, or my mouth, I guess. So you may not think that this matters, but this actually does matter. This, this H does matter because it changes the meaning of some of the words. And it's very frequently used in basically almost every single verb. And it changes what it means based on whether the H is there or not. So when you do the homework, this, this little H at the end of some of the verbs, it is going to matter. And here I have an example of how it matters. So we have here the word kikwa. Kikwa means he or she eats it. Okay, so here is kikwa, right? But if you add that little extra H, that little extra air, that changes the meaning to mean they eat it. So that little extra air does matter. So this is how it would sound. Kikwa, 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 okay? There's a little bit of an extra air, and you may not hear it at the beginning because you're still learning. And, you know, honestly, when I started learning, I had a little bit of a hard time hearing it. But what happens is generally through context, even if you don't hear that H, you can figure out what the meaning of that word is. However, um, that H is there and it is pretty subtle. And we write it to distinguish the words. All right. So when you see the letter H U or U H in Nahuatl, it's supposed to represent the W sound. And the reason that, um, that it's written H U and U H is also again because the Spanish 
they do have letter W, but in Spanish, since they don't use the letter W that much, um, they chose to use HU because that's how uh, Spanish words pronounce the W. They say wa. They, instead of writing wa with the W in Spanish, they'll write a HU, A, and therefore that carried on into Nahuatl. And so here I have the example, uh, three examples. Yalwaya, Yalwaya, H U A. Notice it's a W sound, it's Yalwaya. Uh, it means yesterday. Uh, Weli, Weli means um, to be able to, it's a verb. And um, notice it's H U E and it's Weli. And then this word, Wipla, H U I, Wipla, it means the day after tomorrow. So notice. It's, it's a W sound, but it's H-U-A, H-U-E, and H-U-I. You may also run into this U-H. This U-H is also supposed to um, represent the W sound. So if many of you are danzantes, or maybe you've been around a lot of danzantes, you may hear them say the word donatio. Donatio is, is the word for sun. It also, in some varieties, means day. Okay, so donatio is an acceptable pronunciation because this UH does represent that W sound. So it is Donatio. And that's how Central Nahuatl uh, speakers may pronounce it, or older speakers may pronounce it like that, Donatio. That's a perfectly acceptable way to pronounce it. However, in our variety of Nahuatl, which is Huasteca Nahuatl, the one we're learning, generally the speakers who see that UH will ignore the U and just say it like this, Donatio. You'll hear it like that, Donatio. So that you, they, they kind of ignore it. So I'm letting you know that this is going on because that's how I'm going to be pronouncing those UHs. Those UHs, I'm going to ignore the U and I'm just going to pronounce it like, um, like a, uh, an H. So if you remember from our previous example when I was giving you the word for artist, you saw that it was Chochitla um, Manchichket and it was written C-H-I-U-H and I didn't say Chuchket because in our variety of Nahuatl, we would say uh, that UH, uh, I ignore the U and I just pronounce it like an H. But I do write it in there because it's a grammatical thing. And other varieties understand it better with the U. <clears throat> All right. If you see the letter L, the letter L is always pronounced like a letter L. I know that sounds redundant, but it's not really for English speakers to understand this. It's more because Spanish speakers make this mistake. Spanish speakers may, may see a, a double L and think that it's pronounced like an ella in Spanish, and they might say, oh, this word is calle. However, in Nahuatl, all L's are always L's, so this is not calle, this is cali. That double L is just a prolonged L, so it's cali, cali, okay? It's not calle, don't do that mistake. All right, so now we're gonna talk about the most infamous Nahuatl characteristic uh, letter, which is the TL. And this is the one that gives people the most difficult uh, time in pronunciation. So uh, I often watch videos, I watch archeologists, I watch lecturers, and when they say Nahuatl words, I kind of like laugh in a way. And I kind of like semi-cringe because they'll be like, oh, Quetzalcoatl. And I'm like, oh my God, that sounds horrible. Well, it'll be like, Nahuatl, the Nahuatl language. And you're like, oh my God, don't do it. So it is never pronounced, native speakers and never pronounce it like little, ever. Never, 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 don't do it. It is not pronounced like little. I understand why people are tempted to do that. And that's because in English, you say little, you know, when that TL is like a T sound, right? However, in Nahuatl, it is not. And I'm gonna show you after I give you this explanation how to make the actual sound. The actual sound is more of a click. And I'll give you steps on how to pronounce it. Okay, so when, you, when, it's, when this TL is followed by a, a vowel, it's pretty simple to pronounce. It's just tla, tle, tli. That's easy, right? So here I have an example. Tlali, which means earth, land, dirt, you know, a lot of different things. Tlali, so that one's pretty simple. But what gives people a difficult time is when they try to pronounce the TL in the word final, uh, at the very end of a word, or at the end of a syllable, I guess. And <clears throat> here is how you would say it. So this word is ek, ek, ek. It means bean, or beans, bean or beans. And then here we have the word siwak, 
Siwak. So now I'm going to show you how to make this very particular sound for Nahuatl. <clears throat> so what you're going to do is you're going to start with pronouncing the letter T. So in English, we may pronounce the letter T like this. However, that's not the T that I'm talking about. The T that I want you to make is a T, but with your tongue in between your teeth, like this. That's the T that Nahuatl has, and that's the same T that we're going to be using when we pronounce this TL sound. So it's T, okay? So start with that T. And this is the same T that, that Spanish speakers use. It's the T, okay? Once you pronounce that, that T in Nahuatl, what you want to do at the same time is expel air through the two sides of your mouth and kind of try to hiss like you're a snake. So it's something like this. You know, try to not like spit out too much. <laughs> but that's the sign you, you try to make that, okay? That's the second step. The third step that you're going to do to make this sound is you're going to do that same hissing sound, but you're going to do it fast, like a, in one motion, uh, to make it sound more like a click. So this is how you do the TL. Okay? So that's, that's how you pronounce the TL sound. Now, I understand that this is not an easy sound to make. So if you find yourself saying little Nahuatl, Quetzalcoatl, like that, you know, you can make your sound sound better if you just pronounce it like a T. And so instead of saying Nahuatl, you can say Nahuatl. The reason you can do this is because our, our variety has the TL sound, but there are other varieties of Nahuatl that do not have the TL sound. They have just the T sound. So in fact, they don't even have TL at all, and they just pronounce it like a T. So some varieties already do that, and so if you have a hard time pronouncing that TL, you're better off pronouncing it like a T. So instead of saying Tlali, you could say Tali, or instead of Et, Et, or instead of Siwat, Siwat, because some varieties of Nahuatl already do that, and so it's completely 100% acceptable to do that, and you'll sound pretty good, okay? Now, me, I'm really passionate about not mispronouncing Nahuatl, that way <laughs> and I just did it for emphasis so I made a, a song to particularly point out how not to pronounce Nahuatl so I call it the Nahuatl song <laughs> and so you may or may not recognize the melody from a song from somewhere in the 90s and so I'm about to hear it for you but again this is how not to pronounce Nahuatl okay so it goes like this <clears throat> No, it's not Nahuatl. Nahuatl won't be pronounced that way by me. I'll tell my friend to seriously try to stop Nahuatling at me. <laughs> so as you can tell, I had a lot of fun <laughs> with this. But basically the whole point is, don't call it Nahuatl. It's like, ah, don't do it. I know that you're learning, so now you have the lecture. If you can't pronounce it, pronounce it like a T. All right, so Wali. So it's Nahuatl, not Nahuatl. All right. Okay, let's continue on with the alphabet. So the letter is Q-U. In English, when we see this Q-U, we might think that it's pronounced like question. However, in Nahuatl, this Q-U is always pronounced like a K, always. So it is never pronounced like, Q, like question, never. So here I have this example, Kechkemit. Kechkemit is this um, poncho that uh, native women wear that's like this triangular poncho, one of those ponchos that I crochet sometimes. Um, and uh, this is traditionally worn by women. <clears throat> and so this is what a kechkemit is, okay? And notice there's Q-U-E, but we say ke. And then this other Q-U-E, and it's still ke. So it's kechkemit, not kechkemit, okay? So don't do that mistake. We also have the word kimaka, which means he or she gives it to him. And kimaka is pronounced kimaka. It is not pronounced kuimaka. Right? Vale. I hope that's clear. Don't worry if you're falling asleep. I hope you're not falling asleep because we're about to do some exercises with towards the end. All right? So this letter TZ is pronounced uh, 
uh, how you would expect it. It's pronounced like, like a double Z, like in pizza. So here I have the word pizzot. Pizzot means pig. And then I have this word nipatsmiki. Nipatsmiki means I feel hot, like weather-wise. The weather is, is hot. So maybe you're stuck in some region in California and your house is burning. You might say nipatsmiki because you're feeling hot. Or maybe some of you are not in California, so you, don't have, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Anyways, the whole point of this is nipatsmiki. This TZ is like pizza, okay? Nipatsmiki. All right. The letter X is always pronounced like an SH. So you saw previously the word mexica that had an X in it. And then here I have this word shia, which means like go, like go away, shia. So notice it's an X but it's always pronounced like an S-H, okay? It is not pronounced like X in English. It is not pronounced like X in Spanish. It is always an S-H. <clears throat> the letter Y is pronounced like Y in yes. It is never a vowel. So this word here, heart, which is yolot, notice it's like Y in yes, yolot. Last letter, letter Z. Letter Z is always pronounced like an S. So here I have the word sanili, which means like speech, sanili, or words, speech or words or discourse. So sanili, it's spelled with a Z, but it's pronounced like an S. All right, so naman, matitla yehekokan, let's practice. And we're gonna play a game called kenihki motenkishtia. How is it pronounced? Kenihki motenkishtia. So now this is your moment to unmute yourself and participate, jump in, and then I'm gonna ask you, how do you pronounce this? And then I'm gonna ask you, and you're gonna jump in and tell me how you would pronounce this word. Feel free to just jump in, okay? Right. Oh. Keniki motenkishtia. Koskat. Kuali. Okay. Inin motenkishtia. Koskat. Oscar, ¿cuál es? ¿Qué ni que no te enquistía? No, Pali. Bien. ¿Y ni que no te enquistía? No, Pali. ¿Cuál es? Notice, no, Pali, right? The pa is second to last. And notice it's not no, Pali. Double L, it's not no, Pali, it's no, Pali. ¿Cuál es? If, if you're Mexican, maybe you eat nopales. Well, this is nopales, that word comes from now on. Okay. Keniki no tenkishtia. Tepet. Tepet. Kuali. So I'm, I'm glad that none of you told me tepetl. It is not tepetl. <laughs> tepetl or not tepetl? That is the question. Uh, <laughs> it is tepet. <laughs> And if you have a hard time saying tepet with a click, then say a tepet, and you'll sound significantly better. Thankfully, I didn't hear any of you say tepetl. So, klaso kamati miak for that. Thank you very much for that. Kuali. Tepet. Kuali. Keniki mo tenkishtia? Xochitlatoli. Kuali. Okay. Who else thinks, who else wants to take a shot? Xochitlatoli. Kuali. Uh -huh. So I heard most of you saying Xochitlatoli. Try to emphasize that H just a little bit stronger. So Xochitlatoli. Xochitlatoli. But for the most part, even if you said it Xochitlatoli, it, people would still understand you, but they might hear that you're not aspirating. So Xochitlatoli. Xochitlatoli. Kuali. This word means poetry. So you hear, you see this word xochit, flower. You see this little flower, and then you see this word tlatoli. Tlatoli in Nahuatl means word. It means speech. It means language. It means a lot of things. But here it means flowery word. So this is the word for poetry in Nahuatl. Okay. So kuali, inin motenkishtia, xochit tlatoli. Okay. So here I have two words. I have this verb here and this verb here. Let's start with this verb. This one. Okay. Mm. 
Okay. So, Kenna, it's ich toa. Ich toa. Ich toa. Ich toa. Notice this is one of those verbs that ends in OA, and this O is the loudest. Okay? So, it's ich toa. ¿Cuál es? Ich toa. Uh -huh. Ich toa. Okay? Que nichimo te enquistia inin. Okay. So I heard somebody say Ilia. Okay, Ilia is not right. And the reason that Ilia is not correct is because when you say Ilia, you're emphasizing this this I higher than this I. So you need to pronounce it Ilia. Ilia. So this second to last I, I mean second to last, I guess, syllable. Li, that's the loudest I, not this one. So it is not Ilia, it is Ilia. So you'll run into a lot of these verbs that end in Oa and Ia. That's why I told you that at the beginning. When you see that Ia or Oa, it's the I and the O that are the highest, always. So Ilia. Vale. Ilia. Ilia. Okay. So now, now we're going to do this again. But because I want you to start getting into the habit of answering to, with me in more complete sentences, because that's how you're going to get to the level where you can actually speak, I want you to now respond to me with a complete sentence. So I'm going to ask you, How is it pronounced? And you're going to tell me, And then the word, like here, right? So, inin. Do, do any of you remember from last week what inin means? It is? It means this. It means this. Oh, this. I understand why you think it means it is because the is is implied, but it means this. 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 So, inin motenkishtia, this is pronounced. And notice that there's no word is. Motenkishtia means is pronounced. Motenkishtia. It means it is pronounced. So notice there's no word is in Nahuatl. It's just this and is pronounced. Nahuatl doesn't, ha doesn't have the is part. The verb motenkishtia fills in the is part. It means to be pronounced, okay? So now you're going to say inin motenkishtia kosta. So now I'm going to ask you this question. Keniki motenkishtia? Inin motenkishtia kosta. Kosta. Quali inin motenkishtia koskat. Quali. Kenihki motenkishtia? Inin motenkishtia no pali. Quali. Somebody has their uh, sound a little bit loud. Inin motenkishtia no pali. Quali. Kenichi motenkishtia? Inin motenkishtia tepe. Motenkishtia tepe. Motenkishtia tepe. 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 Quali. So, inin motenkishtia tepe. Okay. Quali. Kenichi motenkishtia? Inin motenkishtia. Xochitlatoli. Quali. Inin motenkistia, xochitlatoli. Xochitlatoli. Quali. Kenichi motenkistia? Inin motenkistia. Istoa. Quali. Kenichi motenkistia? Inin motenkistia. Ilia. Ilia. Quali. Quali. So, inin motenkistia. Ihtoa. One. Ilia. So, based on that context, what do you think one means? And. Quali. Quali. One. Oh, yeah. So, other varieties may say e one. So, be aware. Okay, but one is acceptable. So in summary, the second to last syllable in Nahuatl is always pronounced the highest, no matter how long the word is. And as if you remember, the Nahuatl language is a, um, 
is an agglutinating language, which means you may add a lot of suffixes and prefixes. So you'll get really long words, but no matter where, where, how long that word is, it is always second to last syllable, always. Generally, Nahuatl is pronounced the way that you, the, the way you see the words are pronounced how you would expect them to be pronounced in Spanish because Spanish friars were the ones who wrote it down. And so that's what, that's what they used. However, there are some exceptions which I outlined in this class. And if you speak English, I, I hope that I gave you enough examples that you understand how to pronounce words. This time you're, you're going to have homework um, that is going to ask you to pronounce a whole bunch of words. There's the question section. And then you also have the answers that uh, write out phonetically how each of the words are pronounced for you. In case you have questions, next week you can ask me questions. Uh, so here I have all the words that you just that you just learned and what they mean in case you were wondering what they meant. Next week we're going to talk about to be or not to be. And the last thing I want to do is I want to correct some errors that I did last week. So I don't know if you all remember last week you asked me how to say shy and I give you the two answers for classical Nahuatl and for um, modern Nahuatl. One thing that I forgot to tell you was that this verb mati it requires the reflexive mo. So in order to say I am shy or he or she is shy, you need to add the mo there. So you need to say mo weyimati. So if you want to say I am shy, you will say ni mo weyimati. Okay? I forgot to say that at that time, and so here I'm correcting that error. Another thing that I, uh, when I listened to it back, is I realized that I translated the word chichik as sour, but it actually means bitter, not sour. The word for sour in Nahuatl is shokuk. And then the last thing is when you all asked me to make that really long word, I gave you, uh, I gave you the word wikilia. Wikilia means to take someone something, um, but I translate it as bringing something. So I give you like the opposite meaning. It, so I messed up. It means to take something. Wikilia means to take something to someone. The word to bring something to someone is walikilia. And so you can kind of see why I messed up because those words are very similar. Okay. Walikilia versus Wikilia. Okay, so now I'm, uh, I want to say Tlaskamati Miak. Thank you very much. Here is the information if you want to donate. And now I'm going to leave it up to Tlatlani Listli. And you can ask all the questions that you want. And I hope you got a lot out of this class. All right, so I'm going to look through the question sections and you feel free to. Uh, so I'm going to look through the questions in the chat and feel free to jump in. Okay. Mm -hmm. And don't forget to unmute yourself because a lot of people do that. Okay. Where's... Hmm? Where's Simon Cowell? I don't understand. All right, Ch Charles, you need to clarify. I don't know what you mean. How is it spelled? Kikemi. Maybe you're trying to say the word Kechkemi. Nopal. Nopali means indígena de Mexico. <laughs> you know, some people in Mexico do use the word Nopal to, to signify an, an indigenous pers person. And sometimes people make a joke out of it. So I understand why somebody is saying that. No worries. I use Google, so I, I figured out how to spell it. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, and yeah, I noticed that uh, a lot of people would uh, call each other no foul, like you said, um, mm -hmm. but technically it's a Spanish word that derived from the Nahuatl language and is basically calling someone indigenous or someone that is more connected to its culture or its, especially the food, you know? Yes. And so, it's so now not, I understand that. In Spanish, it's not necessarily, well, in Mexican Spanish, sometimes it's used as a joke. Sometimes it's right. in a positive way. So it has double meaning, I guess. I wish they stopped using it in an insulting way. <laughs> sometimes they mean it in an insulting way. Sometimes they mean it in a positive way. It changes based right. on the context. Exactly. All right. So somebody wrote, No Xochitlatoli. Um, no Xochitlatoli, somebody was trying to write my poetry, which that is how you would say my poetry. However, in our variety of Nahuatl, that li is not um, written, so we wouldn't say no xochitlatoli for my poetry, we would say no xochitlatoli. And so you don't know that yet because I haven't yet um, 
you know, I haven't yet taught you about how to possess things, how to say my, yours, and theirs. But when you possess something, like you're trying to say my poetry, you would drop the LLI in the word xochitlatoli and it would become no xochitlatoli to mean my poetry. Um, well, thank you, Shia. So two syllable words, the first syllable is always stressed. Yes, if you have a two syllable word, the first syllable is going to be stressed because it would be the second to last syllable in that word. <laughs> is na xochitlatoli mean I am a poet? No. So last week we learned, we learned na, ta, ya, tojuantin, imojuantin, and inijuantin. Those are the pronouns in Nahuatl. They're equivalent to saying I, you, him, her, they, etc. And maybe you're thinking like in English, you're thinking I am a poet, and so you're thinking na means I. It does mean I. However, Nahuatl doesn't construct that sentence of I am a poet in that manner. Nahuatl uses a different prefix to signify I am, and that prefix is ni. So you would not say na xochitlatoli, as in, or na xochit, uh, na, well, xochitlatoli doesn't mean poet, it means poetry. But if you want to see poet, you would say xochitlatorquet. So you would say na ni xochitlatorquet. That ni part is absolutely necessary to say I am in Nahuatl. So you have to put ni in front of it, not na. You can say na ni xochitlatorquet, and that's fine. But the ni always has to be there. The na does not have to be there. The na is optional. So you can just say ni xochitlatorquet, and it means I am a poet. I can uh, spell it uh, out for you uh, and, sell, and send it to the group chat so you know how you would say, I am a poet. And by the way, this I am a poet phrase is actually in the first lecture. Ni xochi la to I actually gave it as one of my examples. So that's how you say, I am a poet. I am a poet. <clears throat> and that ni does not mean is. It, it's, that ni means a particle referring to me. And you will see this ni in front of verbs later on, saying like, ni, I am the one doing this action. Ni, not na. Even though I taught it to you, I taught it to you because some construction in Nahuatl require the na, the ta, the ya. And they do mean I. But it's really the ni, the ti, and um, the in, which you'll learn later. Those are the ones that are absolutely always required. And you'll, you'll learn that later, so... I understand why you made that mistake. Um, thank you, Shtia. Okay. Uh, like when, okay. Okay, thank you. Can you say pronounced one more time? Yes, the word for, so, so the, okay. So the verb in Nahuatl is ten kishtia, okay. Hold on, I'm about to give you an explanation. Ten kishtia, ten kishtia. That's the actual verb. It means to pronounce something. To pronounce something. Okay. However, the word that I gave you was mo ten kishtia. Mo ten kishtia. And that means it is pronounced. Okay. Uh, the person who asked, uh, like Zohar, um, do you, do you speak uh, Spanish at all or no? Because the explanation of why that mo is there, in, okay. Okay, so Zohar. So you know like in Spanish, sometimes you say pronunciar. Pronunciar is to pronounce something. But if you want to say in Spanish, it is pronounced, you would say se pronuncia. Like in English, it kind of translates that it, tr it pronounces itself. But in Spanish, it's more clear, se pronuncia. That se pronuncia, that se part, is the mo. So in Nahuatl, mo tenquistia is equivalent as in, as in Spanish as saying se pronuncia, like it pronounces itself, like in Spanish. So, so that's why it translates in English as in it is pronounced, because just like in Spanish, se pronuncia is the same thing as in English saying 
it is pronounced. So in Nahuatl, Motenquistia is literally like saying, se pronuncia, and it kind of doesn't make sense in English. So I, um, that's why I kind of, I asked you if you spoke Spanish, but for English speakers, essentially, this mo prefix is a reflexive. It means that, that an action is being done unto, it, unto the agent who's doing the action. And so it's saying, mo is saying, it, is, it pronounces itself. And it doesn't really make sense in English, but it translates in English to mean it is pronounced that way. Can you please tell us what is the word for magic? I'm not 100% sure if there's a word for magic because I don't know. Um, let, me, let me look in, into my dictionary uh, right now and find out. And by the way, uh, I'm going to give you all a class on, the, on how to use the dictionary later on. And so I can send you the, the files right now if you want here on the, um, on the live chat, the necessary files that you need and the program that you need. Um, this dictionary has 37 thousand entries it has phrases it has sample sentences it has you can look up words in spanish you can look them up in english you can look them up in nahuatl using the classical alphabet but this is the the uh, dictionary that i'm using it's called um, personal lexicon and i'm about to look up the word for magic because i'm not even sure that there is a word for it magic person who uses black magic de la chi chi Mm. There's, a word, there's a word for a person who uses black magic. <laughs> and I, I have that word. Um, magia, let's see, magia. Persona. I don't, honestly, I don't think that they have a uh, word for it. Um, they probably have some kind of way to like talk about magic, but they don't, they don't actually have a word for magic. Um, because maybe they have a different concept. But the closest I could find, which is not really the word for magic, is a person who uses black magic, and that is tetlachiket. It literally means a person who does things to people. So it's very vague. <laughs> it's, very, the, it's very vague. And this is a Huasteca word. So honestly, mm, I don't think there is a word for it. Um, and okay, so for people who uh, want to know what dictionary I use, I use this dictionary. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go Google this, this name of this dictionary, personal lexicon. And this is not a dictionary. This is a, a program that you can download either Mac or PC, okay? Go, go search for this program. It's a free program. You don't have to pay for it. And then um, I am about to send everybody the, the um, the file that you need. Uh, it's an eight megabyte file. So let's see, March 22nd, that one. All right, so right now I'm uploading to everybody, to the group chat, this file called March 22nd, 2020 PLF. That PLF can only be opened by the program. So you have to download the program first, and then you're gonna go under, under file import, and then import this file into that program and they will open the dictionary for you. That's the only way to open it. You cannot double click on this file. Your Mac or your PC cannot open it unless you have that program. So this is the one that has all kinds of words. This is the dictionary I use. If right now for some reason you can't download it, another good dictionary that is available online for free is uh, the, uh, the Nahuatl Oregon Dictionary by Oregon University that you can Google, but let me send you all the link right now. So the uh, Nahuatl Oregon Dictionary. You know what, at one point, if you're not signed in to my newsletter, I'm eventually gonna send everybody in one of the newsletters, like a link to all kinds of Nahuatl resources, learning uh, Nahuatl resources, so you can like learn and do exercises on your own. Um, but here's another link. This, this specific dictionary is very good. Um, the reason I like it is because it has classical Nahuatl words and it also has Huasteca words. So when you look up words in that dictionary, you look for this, this title, which is EDS. EDS is the name of an institution, but essentially all you really need to know is that this institution uses Huasteca Nahuatl. So when you see EDS or EDS definition, then you know it's Huasteca Nahuatl and those are the words we're gonna be using, okay? 
And uh, okay, so. Uh, Speaking of resources, I have this, I mentioned it last time, you know, that there's this uh, poet who uses uh, classical uh, Nahuatl and uh, he, he takes uh, invocations, Aztec prayers and invoke, uh, translated from the Nahuatl by a friar in the 1500s uh, when they, uh, they were trying to uh, uh, create the, la the language, I guess, for Nahuatl. Anyways, uh, this particular poet uh, uses these prayers and he has them all in this book. Uh, then he translates them uh, into Spanish and into English, and you can read them all there. They're beautiful poems, uh, but he's also a very well-known poet and uh, uh, used to teach at UC Davis. Uh, his name is Francisco Alarcón, and I've given you the link uh, to the Amazon book, and you can browse through it uh, and look at the poems in there and the prayers. These are all uh, Mexica prayers, uh, incantations, uh, uh, letters, uh, all kinds of things. Uh, it, it's just wonderful stuff. So if you want to try that out, you know, uh, uh, to look through it, that's, that's, uh, you can look through it online at Amazon. It's got a, a look, a look, see, whatever, and you can flip through the pages there. Tlazokamati mm -hmm. Niak, Edgar. Um, thank you very much. Um, so somebody asked me again, if, is Nahualot, is that close for the word for magic? And, you know, now that I think about it, that kind of does make sense because the, um, the, the Nahuas had like a, like a, a belief that somebody could turn into a, a, um, they could turn into an animal that they had a Nahuali. And so, um, some people say, oh, that they could turn into an animal. And so this word Nahualo that Fiera is giving us, now that I think about it, it kind of does make sense. But that, that lot that you're adding to it is like saying Nahuali Ness. And so I, I could understand how that does kind of mean magic because the Nahuales were supposed to be like your like animal spirit that you could turn into. And so in that way, there is some kind of magic involved in that. And so maybe Nahualo does kind of make sense. I'm just not 100% sure whether somebody, if you told them Nahualot, if they would understand it as magic, just magic, or if they would understand it as the process of being able to transform into an animal into your Nahual. So, but it is pretty close. So that's a pretty good um, translation for magic, I guess. Um, how do you pronounce Netzahualcoyot? I heard that he was a poet and a leader and a poem of his is in, is in, in on a Mexico peso. Yes, so you pronounce ne, ne sawalcoyot. Ne sawalcoyot. You pronounced it with the TZ. It's really um, not with the TZ, it's just with the Z. So it's N-E-Z-A-H-U-A-L-C-O-Y-O-T-L. Ne sawalcoyot. Yes, he was, he's a very famous uh, Nahuatl-speaking poet, and you can go on the uh, internet and type it like ancient Nahuatl poetry or whatever, and you will find a lot of his poems on the internet even for free, but they, they're also in books, and so he's very well known <clears throat> as a poet. Um, yeah, I can add the, the PLF to the Google Drive so that later on people who are watching this video on YouTube, they can download it on the, on the Google Drive, that dictionary, so that everybody who watches this later can have those 37,000 words and phrases and spread like an eagle. I have a question. Spread your wings. Yes. Um, so are long vowels not really used in modern Nahuatl? Mm. In some varieties of Nahuatl, and I believe in Morelos, they do, and they, um, they can distinguish the length of vowels. In Huasteca Nahuatl, they do not distinguish the length of vowels, but in some varieties of Nahuatl, they do. It's just that those are a small group of people who still distinguish the length of vowels. Mm -hmm. So, yes, yes, a small group of people do. But in our variety, the length of the vowel doesn't really matter. 
it doesn't really change the meaning of most words. I can only really think of one, which is chichi, and it could either mean dog, and I think it has, I forget what the other meaning is, but the length of the vowel in that case does matter. How does that sound? Chichi? And then the long, like how, how does the difference between like a long vowel and a short vowel sort of it's, actually sound? I don't know because I actually can't distinguish it myself. Oh, okay. But uh, I would expect that it just, it's just a, a long, I would expect it to be like this, chi chi versus chi chi, like longer lasting. But okay, chichi, you just kind of hold it longer? Hold it longer. That's all oh, I really okay. could tell you. That's what I think. Uh, Charles asked, how do you say it's hot? You can say it's hot in this way. La totonilla. La totonilla. It's hot. This is like it's hot outside. It's hot. Like outside. La totonilla. And I'm, I'm typing it out to everybody right now. La totonilla. It literally means there's heat everywhere. And he asked me, oh, I heard somebody saying that it, it means something like heat. It, it means he is everywhere. Toton, totoni is to become hot. Totonilla is there is heat. And then tla totonilla means there's heat all around. And so that's why it means it's hot. Um, what is it called? I, okay. This one, this. How become a city. Oh, yeah. Charles is asking how Nezahualcoyot's name became a city and what is it that he did that was honorable? Um, I don't know how his name became a city, um, Nezahualcoyot's name became a city, but he was such a famous poem, poet even during his time that a lot of people knew him. Maybe where, where he was born is where the name of the city comes from, I'm not sure. He was he was just known honor he was just known as an honorable poet, but he was also a leader of a city. So maybe he was the leader of that city. I'm not sure. You would have to look at look up into the history of that that town, Nesahualcoyot. <clears throat> this cause makes poems. Uh, is okay. Ah, is there a Nahuatl committee that adds new words? I know Spanish and Spain and French have one. Yes, I know Spanish has the Real Academia Española and they're all constantly, you know, trying to regulate the language and tell people, don't say it this way, say it that way. Nahuatl doesn't have that yet. Um, maybe one day it will, but as of right now, it doesn't. Um, but there's definitely different institutions that kind of focus and are trying to push towards uniting the writing system of Nahuatl. And so right now there's a huge push to just unite everybody into in writing the exact same way. And I, I would predict that if you don't have a, a set writing system, you can't yet have an institution that tells you how to say things or how to write things because the writing system's not standardized. Um, but there isn't right now, but I hope one day there is. That way the language will be be more consistent because some varieties might say that one word means one thing and other varieties might say, well, no, it means this other thing. And so there's somewhat of conflict in those ways. And I know like the, the Real Academia Española, they compile like a dictionary and they'll be like, okay, in this country, this word means this. In this other country, this word means this other thing. And they give you all the translations. I think now what should totally have that because there's so many regions and so many possible words to say one thing, that if we had that compiled into one gigantic dictionary, I think it would be 100% um, useful. And that's a future project for future generations. Maybe when I'm dead, they'll do. Or maybe now, I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh -huh. All right, any other questions? I don't see any other questions in the chat. Maybe I missed some. <clears throat> ah, what, what does Nimitz mean in I love you? You will learn this later, but you kind of, I kind of already told you, remember I told you that in, in verbs, you need this ni component to signify I. So this ni is I, meets is to you. Like you're the one receiving the action. So I is the knee part, knee. Meets is to you. 
And the tlazotla is the verb that means love, to love. To love. So the whole phrase, me meets, me meets, and tlazotla literally means I to you love. And it kind of doesn't make that much sense in English, but you, if you speak Spanish, it would help you a lot to think about it like this. Yo te amo. Because essentially, Nahuatl does it exactly the same way. Yo te amo. Yo te amo. Mi meets la sopla. It's yo te amo. Can nimi be used as well for, as well or only nimi? Um, I have not heard uh, somebody say nimi yet. However, there are so many varieties of Nahuatl that you, there might be some varieties out there that might say nimi tlazotla. But as far as I know, I haven't yet heard that. It is a possibility. You'll be surprised how much variety there is in pronunciation of specific words in Nahuatl and so some varieties of Nahuatl don't say nimits. Um, I know of a, a, a teacher, uh, Diego Vasquez, his variety doesn't use nimits. They just say na, um, they would just say mits tlazotla, na mits tlazotla. But in my variety that's technically not grammatically correct. So, so we would say na nimits tlazotla. The ni is more commonly seen in most other varieties. So there are some varieties that omit the knee, but it's not very common and um, so only some do that. So, um, but it is possible that there might be a variety out there that might say Mimi. I haven't heard one say Mimi yet. I have a question about the number three because in so many different dictionaries, I see it spelled in so many different ways. Um, sometimes it's a -yi, Sometimes it's yay, -yi. sometimes it's yay without the Y, but it, I mean, you kind of can't distinguish it very well anyways. <laughs> How does, does that is, work? The answer is all three of them are acceptable. Okay. All three of them are used, and that's why you see so many different ways to, to write it. Because mm -hmm. in, even in our variety, you can say it yay, or you could say yay, and other varieties say yay. So okay. the answer is all three of them are used, and that's why you see them. Gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. I've also I've also seen coatl um, will sometimes be spelled with a W between the O and the A, uh, which I guess like, which I guess doesn't always make a huge difference because they mm -hmm. kind of sound the same. Oa and Oa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you might hear it as coatl instead mm -hmm. of coatl. Yes, that that is the more common in Guerrero. Okay. So Guerrero speakers, they tend to they tend to say it like this, coat, and that's why they write it more like a W sound, like that coat. But okay. uh, in my ver our writing, say coat, and you can hear how they're very similar, coat right. and coat. And so when you see it, it's spelled H U A. It's generally probably coming from Guerrero. Okay. Interesting. <clears throat> If no one else has any other questions, I have one last question. I'm sorry. <laughs> Earlier, you said that the word for to like to shoo or to like go away was like shia. Uh -huh, shia. Um, and I noticed that it had the uh ending um, in like kind of a more central Nahuatl. Would that be pronounced like shiao? Uh huh. Yes. Okay. Shiao. It would, it would be shiao. Okay. Because shiyao. that uh is a w, so imagine that that was a w. You say shiao. She yell. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. And in classical times, they did pronounce it as a UH. So they would have said she yell. She yell. Okay. Are these, uh, these uh, slides that you showed us earlier, uh, are they in the, uh, have they been added to the lesson plan or what, that we initially got? Can you say that again? I don't, I don't understand your question. Okay, uh, you, you know, when you were uh, showing us all these, uh, your, your presentation mm -hmm. uh, on pronunciation, all those, uh, yeah. you know, the alphabet and such, are they in, added to the original uh, lesson plan that you sent us at the very beginning at the end of that, or is that on a different file or, or what? 
Hmm. Okay, so what happens is that when I make your In other course, words, it's lesson one and lesson two together. I see. see, I really don't understand your question. Look, let me explain uh, the process and then maybe it'll be clear because I actually don't really understand what you're asking me. Um, okay. When I make the class, I make the class on Google, on Google Docs, on, on Google PDF, mm -hmm. right? So that, 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 that Google Drive link that I'm, I'm gonna send again, to everybody that google drive link gives you access to those class lights that's those are the class lights that i'm constantly updating so every time they like i make a mistake or something new or whatever i always update it there so the most updated file is there so lesson one which was last week that is all those lights are there as in they're called zero one now what's introduction today's lesson mm -hmm. is called zero two alphabet now what alphabet and stress or it's called alphabet and stress and so that have them as two separate files the lectures and each week I make a new one so by next uh, the next week you'll see it there does that answer your question yes yes that answers it thank you okay cool mm -hmm. yeah it, it's there now in fact today I even made more changes and so <laughs> the most updated version is always there And also the homework is in there. So what does tikan mean? Tikan? Um, I've never seen tikan. Is that part of a... I can think of tikan as part of a bigger word, but I can't think of tikan as a word by itself. So like I could think of tlamach tikan meaning a school. Or I could see it as mati momach tikan, let's learn. But I cannot think of tikan as its own word. So maybe you heard tikan as part of a longer word. I could look it up. I don't think it's a word, though. Tikan. No, no, I don't see it as a word. Oh, tika. Oh, tika. Okay, tika without the end, yes. So tika, you probably heard it as ken tika. Ken tika. Ken tika is a phrase that they use in Central Nahuatl to mean how are you? How are you? So tika in Central Varieties means you are. You are. Like how are you doing in that? So you, I've heard a lot, in our variety, we don't say kentika, but in central varieties to say, how are you, they'll say kentika. In our variety, we say kenihki tiitstok, kenihki tiitstok, uh, which I can write, which is how are you, kenihki. And they pretty much translate exactly the same, but in their variety, you use tika. In our variety, we use tiitstok, tiitstok. We would say kenihki tiitstok, kenihki tiitstok. They'll say, Ken, Ken tika, how are you? In Guerrero, they'll say, Ken Tineni. So you see, there's a lot of regionalism. Uh -huh. So can someone say, Tikatsin? Yes. I believe. Ken, Ken, Ken Tikatsin. It doesn't sound right in that way with that verb but it's i've heard a different um expression that is more reverential and i believe it's ken moyetstikatsin and that also means how are you doing but i'm not a humble percent sure I'm saying it right because it's also central Nahuatl and I would have to 100% verify that phrase for you or is it moyetstika I don't remember <clears throat> so I'm not 100% sure you could say just tikatsin and how are you doing like that because tsin is usually added to a noun and tika ka is a verb so you can't really add it there and when you add it there generally 
in some varieties you add it as sinoa in part of a verb and I don't see it here as sinoa so I don't know if you could really do that I don't think so <clears throat> I heard that in um, in some varieties of, I guess, older Nahuatl, um, only animated uh, entities could be pluralized, I guess, and that non-animate objects, uh, I guess, I don't know how it would work, but they can't be pluralized. Is that something that is carried over into modern, like, Westica and mm -hmm. our, another our, our variety does the, exactly that. Oh, interesting. So animate meaning, like, humans or animals or alive things that make gestures, I guess, what, is what anime means. It, mm -hmm. In our variety of Nahuatl, cannot be pluralized. Meaning, I mean, sorry, are pluralized. And inanimate, which are like rocks, metal, uh, a spoon, hat, you know, necklace, it cannot, mm -hmm. be, an, it cannot be pluralized. Now, Interesting. Mm -hmm, now um, that's the traditional way to do it. And that's the traditional way that I'm going to show you. However, okay. you may run into speakers of other varieties who do pluralize inanimate objects. Like one example, you may hear them say altepeme. Altepeme would mean like cities. And so a city is not an alive thing, I guess it's not an animated thing. So it would technically be altepet, even if there's many of them. One altepet or many altepet, you still say it like that in Nahuatl, in traditional Nahuatl. But you may still hear people say altepeme. So it's not necessarily wrong. It's just more like the language is changing. Because, okay. you know, Spanish has pluralizing of inanimates. And so it has that like influence. Everything, yeah. But in traditional Nahuatl, you cannot pluralize inanimates. Interesting. And that, but like sense wise, I guess my question is uh, is it context by, by which you get the understanding that someone's referring to many? So if I'm talking about like someone's house, and I say, or, or someone's houses, if they have multiple houses, but I can really only refer to their house. You would say their house. How, as how did that work? You would know be yeah. based on the context. So okay. there's probably other words in that sentence that, that imply plural. So like mm. miak, miak means many. So you would say miak kali, many houses. Or let's say you're talking and you're giving numbers. Well, that number is going to tell you if it's plural or not. And then just generally when you're talking about that whatever subject you're talking about generally you know if there's one or not so like maybe you're saying okay. i'm reading paper i'm reading let's say you have a, a book and you're saying i'm reading these papers or you have a, a st stack of papers and say nikpoa amak and clearly there's a big stack of papers there you know it's more than one but can it be ambiguous yes it can that's, gotcha. There are some ambiguities in that way, but generally, I, in my conversations with like my teacher, I haven't never really, I can't really think of a time where I was like, is it one house, is it two houses? Because of the context of, of what we're talking about, it's pretty clear that I mean more or less. So how? Gotcha. Do I mean? So miak means many, right? Miak means many. So if I said miak kali, technically I'm saying many house, but really it it's understood it's multiple houses that I'm yes. talking about. Okay, yes. got it. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> mm -hmm. That is one of the interesting characteristics of my life. And the other one is that it doesn't have is in the present tense, really. And then um, the long words make it interesting. But yeah. Every language has its little weird quirks, I would say. And right. that's one of them for now. Um, I'm learning Purepecha as well, and I, I believe they do the same thing, but I have to double check. Oh no, actually they do pluralize inanimates. They do. Because I can think of the word for language is Wandakwecha. Wandakwecha literally means words. So they are pluralizing an inanimate. Whereas in Nahuatl, they say Tlatoli for one word or Tlatoli for multiple words. So, okay. So I guess it doesn't carry across a, a um, the cultures, all native cultures. So it's, it's language specific. How do you spell that? How do you spell what? How do you spell that? Many? Oh, miak. Well, actually, there's multiple ways to spell it. Miak and miak. Because some varieties say miak, not 